Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever tried conquering hardcore mode in Grim Dawn in the past? Or maybe you have tried it recently, but after one dead, you are feeling lost and hopeless due to the fact that another character died, and you wasted god knows how many hours just to never get that achievement for completing this mode. Well, look no further, because I, Alexander, also known as Sender Yevitz, will help you get through it with the greatest of ease. First things first, I want to make a clear statement what does beating hardcore difficulty for me is, because I will structure everything that I will say after this based upon my standard. It is pretty simple, all you have to do is to kill Korvac on ultimate difficulty, nothing more, nothing less. There will be no attempts at fighting celestial bosses, going in crucible mode, delving deeper into shattered realm beyond level 25, and clearing out every single skeleton key dungeons on all three difficulties for obvious reasons. Although beating skeleton key dungeons, as well as going in Shattered Realm on Hardcore have their own achievements, I will still put them into optional stuff after you had fully equipped your character with necessary items and had beaten the campaign. Those of you who expected to see a guide to full clear everything on hardcore mode had clicked on the wrong video. For those who are still interested in this, I will guide you all the way from normal until ultimate difficulty on hardcore, including my class recommendation, items, preferable damage type, resistances, constellations, attributes, components and augments, as well as preferable skills to use and their distribution, dangerous zones, bosses and areas, etc. Please keep in mind that I will recommend to you an approach that worked for me. It is probably not the best one or most optimal, but I have managed to beat hardcore with it. However, no one are 100% secured on hardcore difficulty, and you can die even if you know everything in this game by heart. Before I begin, one important thing that I wish to announce. Since there will be a lot of useful information, I decided to split this guide into four parts, to make it easier for you. In part 1, I will discuss class recommendation, damage type, constellations. Part 2 will be all about skills. Part 3 will be focused around itemization, components and augments. Finally, in part 4, I will touch upon some dangerous areas and bosses. I recommend you to grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, smash the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Trust me, it will be worth it. Part 1. Class Recommendation For beating the hardcore difficulty in Grim Dawn, especially if it is your first time playing on this mode or in this game, I recommend you to pick Dead Knight. Those of you who are unaware, this is a class combination between Soldier and Necromancer. Now you are probably wondering why am I recommending you this class, as well as majority of other more experienced players. Is he the strongest class in the entire game? No. Is he the most defensive class in the entire game? No. What is the point then? The answer is pretty simple. This is the only class combination that can obtain full Legendary Creek set on Elite difficulty, before going into the ultimate. No other class combination that exist in this game have such an overwhelming advantage. Oh, and I do mean overwhelming. Throughout the majority of the ultimate difficulty, as long as you have this set and you made sure that your other defensive and offensive parameters are on point, you will be an unstoppable killing machine. It is pretty easy to get it, and I will show you the exact location as well as bosses that you need to kill later, once I get to Elite Difficulty Explanation. Main class will be Soldier, and Necromancer is secondary. Why not vice versa? Well, I recommend you to use Soldier's exclusive ability 
Alaron's Rage instead of Harbinger of Souls and Master of Death, because of the damage type that we will be focusing on. Since I mentioned it already, let's go to the next topic. Our main damage type will be physical with some internal trauma damage attached to it. This is one of the easiest damage type to collect on equipment that you will buy from regular and factional vendors or collect from chests and monsters. This is also the damage type that does not require huge resistance reduction from your skills, gear or constellations to be very effective. Generally speaking, for normal and to an extent elite difficulty, it is enough to have 30% and from second half on Elite until Ultimate, 60% is a very good number. Typically, you will get it by combining 1% base resistance reduction constellation with another ability from your main or secondary class. How this damage type works and why it has some additional internal trauma elements? Allow me to explain. All monsters have armor and physical damage resistances which mitigates all of damage that you are doing to your enemies. This is why you need resistance reduction, to kill things faster. Internal trauma allows you to ignore all the armor that an enemy might have. However, they will still have some protection from physical damage resistances. Also, internal trauma works as damage over time effect, meaning you can stack it. And when it starts critically striking, it will continue to do so until your target is dead. Your damage over time effect has run out, or you had reapplied it once more. When it comes to constellations, I will show to you the must-have ones for this damage type, and after it, I will highlight others, which I have used for extra resistances and survivability. The very first thing that you will be using is Assassin's Blade. Notes in these constellations are primarily aimed towards increase of your physical and pierce damage. You should not worry that much about pierce, some offensive and defensive ability, and most importantly Assassin's Mark. When you are landing a critical strike, it marks your target, lowering their physical and pierce defense in percent based value. Because this can only work when critical strike is happening, I suggest you bind this mark to your most damaging ability that you have. More upon skill suggestions later. Azrak at the Eternal Sands is your next must have constellation. This is one of the best all-in-one thing to have, which includes increasing your flat and percent based boost to your physical damage, attack speed, movement speed, more defense ability, and finally, it's proc. The proc itself called Shifting Sands and it has a 20% chance of activating from every skill that does damage and upon impact it reduces monster's defensive ability as well as it has a 25% chance of inflicting impaired aim. I will quickly elaborate on those mechanics before I will move to the optional constellations that I used. Defensive ability is responsible for mitigating all of the incoming damage lowering enemies' chance of successfully landing a hit, as well as decreasing their chance of critically striking your character. Offensive ability is responsible for increasing your character damage, improving your chance of successfully landing a hit, as well as increasing your chance of critically striking your foes. The more you have those parameters, the better is your gameplay. As for impaired aim, from Azraka the Eternal Sands, it lowers the chances of successfully landing a hit, both in melee and in range against your character. Now let's look at other constellations, which I included in my build. 
Ghoul is used mostly for surviving in dire situations with the help of ghoulish hunger. Empty Throne gives a lot of resistances, especially against Aether, Chaos, Slow and Stun, which some characters have problems to acquire early on. Hawk is pretty self-explanatory one. More critical damage and offensive ability, and the same I can say about Pantern with additional bonus of having energy regeneration and boost to your cunning and spirit. Chariot of the Dead gives an insane bonus to your offensive ability, slow and stun resistances, and a very good skill. Wayward Soul activates with 20% chance if you are getting hit, which allows your character to start restoring his missing health, as well as receive extra armor and defense ability. Just do not confuse the color of the skill with Ghoulish Hunger because they have the same looking visual cue. Hammer increases the strength of your armor, physical and internal trauma damage, plus it allows you to prolong the duration of your damage over time effects. Eel gives you additional defense ability, movement speed, pierce resistance, and a slim chance to dodge incoming melee and ranged attacks. Solemn Watcher is hands down the best defensive constellation for gaining good amount of resistances from various attacks, as well as lowering reflective damage that our character is vulnerable against, when he or she is hitting every reflective elite, when they have their aura or archmages in vanilla campaign. Kraken is a must-have constellation for all of those who wishes to play with two-handed ranged or melee weapon. It gives both an insane bonuses to your damage, as well as attack speed and casting speed. Finally, Ulzad, Herald of Korvac, almost like Azraka the Eternal Sense, provides boost both to your offense and defense, as well as it provides a new ability that works with 20% chance on attacking your enemies called Ulzad Decree. This proc gives you flat and percent based increase in your physical and internal trauma damage, additional armor and some physical damage retaliation. Not needed for this build at all, but nice to have nonetheless. All in all, with the exception of must-have constellations like Assassin's Blade and Azraka Eternal Sands, you can freely experiment with other ones that you want to grab. Just remember that for hardcore you want to have good mixture between damage and defense, but for softcore you can go full ham on offense. Let's move on the skills that I recommend you to use with Dead Knight on Normal, Elite and Ultimate difficulty because they will be the factor which determines what items you'll be looking for and with what stats. <laughs> 